Mapping a bike tour involves planning and organizing the route for a cycling trip. This process involves determining the best roads, trails, and paths to take, as well as considering factors such as elevation, distance, and the availability of amenities along the way. It is important to carefully map out a bike tour in order to ensure a safe and enjoyable experience for all participants. There are a variety of tools and resources available to assist with this process, which will be examined in this video. By taking the time to properly map out a bike tour, you can create a memorable and rewarding cycling adventure. The easiest way to map a bike tour is to check for routes that have already been created. In the United States, the Adventure Cycling Association is a wonderful resource for a wide variety of maps. Here on their website, you can see their routes, all of which are available for purchase. You can buy paper maps or GPS files for download. If you don't want to purchase a route, there is still lots of valuable information here. They have a forum where you can discuss particular routes, plus a section on the website called, Companions Wanted, where you can find other people to ride with. If you're looking for a route in Europe, try Eurovelo. Here you can find a network of routes that you can download in GPX format for free. These are two of the most well-organized route networks in the world. If you want to check for other routes, another good resource is the Crazy Guy on a Bike website. Here you will find a worldwide collection of resources. This site is best known for its ride journals, which are posted by riders. You are able to search by location. For example, let's look at South America. You can look at all journals or you can narrow it down by country. Let's check Argentina. Now you'll see that we can further narrow it down by state, and even by city. These journals are all written by writers like you and me, and as a result, they vary widely in quality. Some will post root information and some won't. However, another great thing about this website is the resource list. Click on resources at the top, then category, then route. This shows a list of routes. You can click on feature, then maps to narrow it down a bit. There are pros and cons of using someone else's route. Pro number one, time. Planning your own route takes a lot of time and energy. Pro number two, safety. Routes from a trusted source like the Adventure Cycling Association have been vetted. This provides an extra layer of safety. Pro number three, social support. You'll be able to talk to people who have done the route before. After your ride is done, you will be able to give back to the community by helping others who are planning on riding the same route. Now let's talk about the cons. Con number one, location. You might want to ride somewhere that isn't covered on an existing route. Con number two, satisfaction. Planning your own route, although time consuming, is a highly satisfying process. Con number three, customization. Creating your own route gives you more control over what types of roads you want to ride on, how much climbing you want to do, whether you want to go through the middle of cities or try to avoid them, and so on. A hybrid approach can be a good compromise. Take parts of an existing route and customize it to your liking. In order to do this, or to plan your own route from scratch, you will want to use the tools described in the next portion of the video. Google Maps is your best friend when it comes to planning a trip because it's fast, easy to use, and provides so much information. The main warning is that the bicycle feature is not great, but there's a simple trick to use instead. Let's pick a random trip in driving mode, Salt Lake City to Denver. By default, the map tends to use the interstate. To avoid this, click on options, then avoid highways. This gives you a quick and dirty estimate of how far it is from place to place. Here you see three different options. The great thing about Google Maps is the street view feature. We can pick a few random spots along the route to get a feel for what it's like. As a cyclist, my first question would be whether Highway 40 has a shoulder. Let's check a few spots. This one looks decent.
so does this one. We could pick a lot more, and this is still going to be faster than looking for shoulder data on a DOT website, for example. It's a quick way to see what's feasible. When you're dragging the street view guy along, you'll see that other roads show up in blue. This can give you an idea of where you might ride if you want to avoid the highway. You can take a quick look to see if certain roads are paved or not. Let's check a random one. This one's gravel. Obviously, this isn't perfect because a road may begin as paved but turn into gravel halfway through. But it gives you a starting point to do more research, and it's very quick and easy to do. The other great thing about Google Maps is the ease of searching for hotels or campgrounds. Just click the button on the top and it displays some hotels along the route. Zoom in a little and click search this area to see hotels in the middle of the route. There are quite a few. From a quick search, this looks like a feasible route for a credit card tour. Now I can switch to bike view just for fun, plus to look at the elevation profile. There are pros and cons of this. The big benefit is that it will show the bike paths in cities. The main drawback is that it has a tendency to route on some sketchy dirt roads in rural areas. Let's see what's going on here. You see that it routes on a trail in Salt Lake City, which is probably a good thing. Then again, sometimes a street with a bike lane is faster and easier to navigate. Now it takes us on Highway 40 in the rural areas, so there's nothing strange going on here. Let's see what it's doing in Denver. It looks like it's taking some trails and smaller roads through Denver. Smaller roads may or may not be safer, but this route looks fairly decent at a glance. It's doing some weird things near the airport but that would be easy to fix. Again, use this all as preliminary information. These are the three main mapping sites. Let's start with Strava because it probably has the biggest user base. Most of the mapping on Strava is behind a paywall. However, you can look at the global heat map for free. This will give you an idea of where people are riding. There are always exceptions to this, but in general the hottest areas are hot for good reason. I like to use this if I have two different routes in mind to help me decide between the two. If you pay for a membership, you can use their mapping features. I won't go into too much depth because I have always preferred ride with GPS. This is a great tool to use in order to create your own GPS file to follow. The routing is very similar to Google Maps and it has similar options. Again, I choose the driving option and click avoid highways. You'll get a nice elevation profile at the bottom and you can take a closer look at how steep the climbs are. Here I'm going to enter Salt Lake City and start here. Next, simply click on Denver. It generates the route and elevation profile. Just like in Google Maps, you can drag the route around like this. It's a quick way to compare the climbing on one option compared to the other. Here I can hover over the elevation profile and it gives percentages on the climbs. If I'm not happy with the change, there's an undo button here. What I really like is that it shows the road surfaces on the elevation profile. Let's see if I can find some dirt roads. 
there. Now I can estimate how long each unpaved section is and how steep it is. Now I can save the route and get a file for my bike computer. I'll go here to the export option and here are the file options. You can get a basic file for free, but we'll have to pay for turn by turn notifications. Kamut is another option. Let's pick the same destinations and see what we get. You'll see that it's avoiding 40 in rides what I'm guessing are Interstate 70 frontage roads further south. I don't necessarily trust that. I have not used Kamut much, to be honest, but it's another option for everyone to consider. If you have a rough outline, now you can check for local resources. Let's continue with the Salt Lake City to Denver example. I'm going to check the Department of Transportation in Utah. Search Utah Department of Transportation, Bicycle. You'll see the DOT website here. This page isn't useful, and I searched their website for a few minutes and didn't find anything useful. That's the way these state pages are. Some are better than others. Let's check Colorado. There's a lot more information here, plus a map. This map is great and shows shoulder width, where the interstate is close to cyclists, traffic volume, and more. Now let's look at Highway 40 again. It has a shoulder in the western portion of the state and the traffic is low to medium. Sounds good. Then the shoulder comes and goes, and things look potentially sketchy around Steamboat Springs. Traffic is high and there's not much shoulder. Now I would go back to Google Maps and check the street view to see if it's that bad or if I should consider a detour. In the interest of time, let's stop there. I think you get the idea. Other local resources include local bike shops and local advocacy organizations. Ride with GPS can be useful as a local resource, as well, because you can search for routes. I'll search Salt Lake City to Denver and see what comes up. Here we see a few results from individual riders. Sometimes people write detailed descriptions here. You can send a message to the creator and ask if they actually rode the route, if it was safe, if they have anything they would change, etc. Sometimes you'll see routes on here that were posted by bike clubs or other organizations. That's it for today's video. I hope this helped give an idea of where to begin planning a bike tour route. To summarize, begin in Google Maps to develop a rough draft of the route. Next, search for more local information. Finally, plot out your route on Ride with GPS and download the file for your head unit. Thank you for watching. Happy riding!